My name is Jukka Rissanen. I work for uh, Nordic Semiconductor and uh, I have uh, or I'm a Zephyr network stack maintainer, one of them. And uh, I've been working with uh, Zephyr since day one, so from uh, 2015. And this presentation is about current status of the Zephyr network stack. I will be talking about uh, features, um, supported protocols and uh, services, some words about the future. So, um, Zephyr network stack is highly configurable, like the rest of the Zephyr. There are tons of k-config options that you can choose from. Uh, we support dual IPv4 and IPv6 stack. You can uh, turn off features. Uh, well, you can turn on IPv4 or IPv6 separately, or you can use them both at the same time. For applications, there is a PSD socket interface. And of course, the applications can use the other interfaces too in the system. Uh, there are some restrictions for if you want to use the user's mode, user space mode. Uh, there are several connectivity technologies that can, you can use uh, using the socket APIs. For example, for Ethernet, uh, which is kind of uh, the technology used in the simulated environments like QEMU or native sim. And uh, for Wi-Fi, there's two alternatives. You can use the offloaded uh, environment like uh, ESP32, where the Wi-Fi stack is offloaded to the um, co-processor. And recently, it was integrated this native uh, support for Wi-Fi. Uh, currently, there are uh, drivers for Nordic driver and the NXP. Uh, for IoT use cases, there's support for uh, 802.15.4 uh, together with OpenThread. Uh, for modem usage, there's a PPP support, but the modems are actually handled by the modem subsystem, not really uh, that much in the networking subsystem. Uh, for CAN bus, your application could use the socket CAN API which is the PSD socket API, uh, or the native socket uh, CAN bus APIs if needed. The network stack can be split to two parts. Um, you can have a system where your lower level IP stack is um, um, offloaded to a coprocessor, so the upper stack like the PSD socket in interface would be available for your applications, but then the lower stack would be offloaded to the coprocessor. This is, of course, a bit difficult with the debugging system because then it's a kind of black box to you if you don't have the sources to debug things. There are a ton of protocols supported. Um, of course, IPv4 and IPv6 are supported together with ICMP, the multicast and uh, auto configuration. Uh, UDP and TCP are supported, of course. Uh, for secure TCP connections, you can use uh, TLS 1.2. And uh, it was uh, like last week, the 1.3 TLS support was merged in upstream. Uh, for secure UDP connections, you can use the DTLS 1.2. For address management, there's uh, clients for DHCP v4 and v6. Uh, unfortunately, there's only v4 server support, but patches are welcome if you want to have v6 support. And of course, you can set up IP addresses statically if needed. For address management, there's a resolver implementation together with the small cache implementation. And for DNS service discovery, uh, there's support for that together with MDNS and uh, link layer multicast name resolution. Uh, 
that use the uh, DNSSD. And both of these support resolver and responder, and both can be used at the same time. So the resolver and responder, because they share the same board space, it's a bit tricky to implement, but it's not there. Then long awaited feature was this HTTP server support that was integrated to 3.7. Uh, it started already uh, like two years ago as a Google Summer of Code project. And uh, well, the project ended, but the server support was not really functional at that point. So last spring, uh, Robert Lubos and I, Robert is the, one of the network stack maintainers, bought the bullet and uh, decided to just finalize the support. So now we have the server support uh, supporting 1.1 and version 2. And uh, for client, there's only 1.1 support. Uh, together with HTTP, we have a WebSocket client support. And if you want to use the WebSocket server side, it can be done now with HTTP server via this HTTP upgrade mechanism. For IoT world use cases, there's the co-op support uh, and LWM2M support is there that is using the co-op for its work. And uh, well, very important IoT protocol is the MQTT. We support the client 3.1 version and with the TCP, TLS, and WebSocket transports. MQTT for sensor networks, client support is there, only using the socket API at the moment. For file transfer, TFTP is there, and for passing proxy networks, SOX5 support is implemented. For uh, time, time uh, synchronization, there is the PTP support. There's actually a lightning talk uh, in an hour about this PTP. And uh, it's cousin GPTP protocol, which has been supported for a long time already. These are used mainly in Ethernet networks, and they provide like a microsecond uh, level accuracy. If you don't need that kind of accuracy, there is the simple time, uh, simple network time protocol, uh, which provides like uh, tens of milliseconds of accuracy. The six low pan is supported for 15.4. Uh, unfortunately, we don't no longer support Bluetooth IPSP. It was removed in 3.7 uh, server release. For Ethernet networks, there's virtual LAN support where you can uh, separate uh, Ethernet segments to, to uh, using the single wire. And uh, Ethernet bridging support is also there to combine these into one. For Wi-Fi, we recently integrated the WA supplicant support using uh, uh, station mode and simple access mode support. And if you want the full access point mode, you can use the host ABD, which is also integrated at the moment. For network services, uh, so these are kind of uh, functionality you can turn on and off with your application. There is uh, ZPerf which is uh, iperf 2 compatible network traffic generator for, you can use it for performance measurement, for example. The core network stack sends uh, management events for different kind of uh, operations. For example, uh, when interfaces come up and down, new addresses are added, etc., etc. 
and these can be then uh, catched by the application and uh, um, the application can then up act on to these events. The packet capture is mainly, for example, a, a debug feature where you can uh, create a tunnel from Zephyr to outside world, for example, to Linux host. And uh, Zephyr can then send all incoming or outgoing network packets to this tunnel. And then the tunnel or the endpoint of the tunnel can then use, for example, Wireshark to monitor the traffic. The system generates or can be configured to generate statistics. And uh, this can be then monitored via NetShell or there's an API to access that. The connection manager is uh, uh, entity that can uh, monitor the network interfaces in the system. It can turn them on and off depending on some rules. This is mainly useful for uh, if you have a multi-interface kind of system. There's this rudimentary packet filtering where you can uh, uh, either discard or accept incoming or outgoing network packets. This is not really a firewall in a way that you perhaps think firewall is, but uh, patches are there welcome if you want to enhance this in that front. The network shell uh, provides uh, commands to, um, to use for debugging the system. It can, use, uh, it can turn off interfaces, um, it can send UDP packets, TCP data, uh, see connections, see what sockets are there at the moment, etc. The socket services was recently uh, integrated. This is uh, kind of INET lookalike. So uh, if you have a multiple listening sockets in the system, uh, you don't need to create a thread, for example, for each uh, listening socket. There is a system provides a one thread. You just register your socket there, and when incoming data is received, it will call a callback to avoid having too many threads in the system. So you can just uh, save some memory with that. Uh, many of the internal uh, listening sockets in the network stack are converted already to use this. Zephyr has a tracing framework and um, network socket layer has hooked into it. So you can uh, have um, tracing enabled for network sockets. So each socket uh, uh, parameters can be seen via this tracing, network, uh, tracing framework and uh, how long it took to uh, run the API commands and so on. Also, it can collect statistics of how long it took to uh, network packet propagate from application to the driver where it was sent and vice versa. So it can be useful for debugging things. The virtual network interfaces are, uh, um, as I say, virtual in a way that you can stack these on top of other interfaces and uh, the interface, uh, virtual interface can then manipulate the data that is passing through it. It can be used, for example, for uh, tunneling, creating tunnels, or some other similar kind of purposes. About new features, uh, currently, if you want to configure, if you have a system where you have a multiple network interfaces in the system, uh, you need to use kconfig, but it's very cumbersome to use in this case. So, because kconfig really doesn't support this kind of thing. So, there's a PR now created where you can uh, 
define your system as a YAML file. You can have your interfaces created or described in the YAML. At an, in build, build time, it just generates a C header file that has this configuration, and at runtime, this configuration can then be applied to the system. Then, just last week, I sent a new version of this WebSocket console uh, where you can uh, have a console experience and also the shell uh, seen by your web browser. So you, it, you use your browser to connect to Zephyr. The HTTP server is used here. So it then uh, upgrades the connection to the WebSocket and then uh, all the console data and shell interfaces uh, transferred to your uh, web browser. Uh, I have been working on this Wirecard support which is the VPN. It's a bit uh, pending at the moment. Um, the reason is that uh, the embed TLS doesn't support all the needed uh, crypto stuff that Wirecard needs. So it's a bit uh, uh, challenging to get it work. The actual VPN itself is uh, somewhat easier. But let's see, I try to get this uh, done somewhere this year, perhaps. Well, I don't know. But uh, oh, help there is welcome if you want to help. These features are only what I have been doing. They are, I, I don't know what other people are working on, so yeah. Some statistics of the network code. Currently, there's about 210,000 lines of C code. Um, there's uh, four subdirectories there, um, tests and uh, samples, and then the core stack. Yeah, I don't have anything else. Do you have any questions? Yes. Uh, about the uh, RAM consumption for WebSocket. Um, yeah, but the web console, yeah. Um, it's difficult to say because uh, it depends on what hardware features or what features do you uh, uh, add. But the HTTP server itself uh, requires a bit more RAM. And uh, if you enable TLS, then it goes up to the roof because you need a uh, lot of RAM for. Uh, these uh, certificates and so on. So. Okay, if there's nothing else, thank you for joining. Or, oh, hey, Jordan. You mentioned um, Nordic Wi Fi drivers recently. Yeah. Added. Is that in upstream something? Yes, yes. With the binary blobs somehow? Uh, well, it downloads the binary blob. Yeah, so it's. But the binary blob needs to be there at the moment, sorry. <coughs> uh, actually, I have a question to you. Uh, are there any um, network stack developers, not just users here? So, okay, it would be nice to talk to you <laughs> and everybody else who develops a network stack. Question, yeah, 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 okay. Okay, there. Yeah, the question is that what is the default uh, stack for UDP and TCP? Well, it's very difficult to say because there's a ton of knobs that you can tweak. So by default, it gives some, um, and depending on the board, board might affect what uh, features are enabled by default and so on. So it's very difficult to say, but tens of kilobytes for some simple thing. It, it depends on really, it's very difficult to say because uh, if you turn off features too much, then you can't do anything, basically. So, 
Yeah, the question is, is, is there's a discussion supporting PPP over Ethernet? Yeah, um, there hasn't been any requirements. I have actually a prototype for that that I did several years ago, but I haven't finalized it because there was no use case. But if you are interested about that, you can take my code and enhance it and if needed. There are use cases I can describe you after. Yeah, yeah, but not use cases that I have used. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much.